Hope you're having a good time today. We're having a lot of fun running around, and um, some of us are losing more calories than we have ever have, uh, and some for a long time. Amen. I just want to read a few verses here from Luke chapter 12. Jesus had a man come to him and ask him to fix a family problem. Luke 12, 13, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And, G and Jesus said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a diviner or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. So Jesus just skirted the man's question. Jesus did not come to be a judge uh, on this earth. That's the second time he comes. But he says this in verse 16. He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will build down excuse me, pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say unto my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? And Jesus wraps up what he said with, So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I just want to speak just a couple of minutes here on barns that blind you. Uh, this rich man is uh, a farmer, and I love this time of year. I really do. It's probably my favorite season to uh, just how the weather changes, and I, I love, I lived in Florida for a few years, I couldn't stand it. Basically, you had brown grass and then more brown grass, and then you had hot, and then you had really hot, and that's pretty much all there was. There was no fall colors, anything. It was just palm trees. It got cooler at night, orange blossoms, but that was about it. I love to uh, smell the air in the fall. I like the fall. It's a great time of year. And I love farming. And the reason why I like to think about farmers and what they do is because it's, it's, it's the seed bed of America. It's what built this culture, this country, farmers and builders. And I love the resourcefulness and the tenacity that a farmer has to fix stuff, to finish stuff. What I loved about farming in days ago was that they had to completely trust in God to give them their abundance. Now, I understand we have insurance and those kind of things today, and I'm not here to talk about that, but I will say this. Uh, it's one of those vocations where your whole livelihood is wrapped up in the weather. Whether you succeed or not, it's based on the weather. And so I think about this man because this man exemplified a bunch of good character traits, resourcefulness, commitment, ingenuity. He had stamina to continue. Dwight Eisenhower said this, farming looks mighty easy when your plow is a pencil and you're a thousand miles from the cornfield. Farming is a very hard thing to do. So this man was not a lazy man whatsoever. It wasn't his work ethic that was the problem. The problem was that he was blinded by material, temporal things and could not see immaterial, eternal things. And I want you to get a couple points here about the rich man, this farmer. Number one, he, had, he assumed that he had something to do with the ground producing fruit. In verse 16 right there, he said, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. The problem was, it wasn't his doing. The ground was not his doing. Yes, he plowed. Yes, he worked hard. Yes, he had good character. But the ground-producing fruit was God's blessing in his life. So he's becoming blind just by assuming that the abundance was his result. The Bible says that 
to the Israeli, they should remember that it's God that giveth the power to get wealth. The problem with wealth is it begins to, see, to deceive you that you think you're the one earning it. You think you're the one earning it. Isn't it amazing? The Bible tells us that riches have wings and they take flight and they fly away. If your hope and trust is not in God, that stuff can be taken from you in one second and it's gone. So this rich man, he thought he, he was producing the ground. Number two, he thought that life was about what you could accumulate. He said, I have no room. The ground, it's plenteous. I've got everything I need. In fact, I don't have enough space for what I'm producing. He thought that life was about abundance, and that really is the problem with America. America thinks life is about abundance. It's about having stuff. And that's why when a phone is two years old, we throw it away because a new one's out, right? Stuff, 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 stuff. Number three, he thought that physical things would last. He said, I have no room to bestow all my fruits. He said, you know, soul thou hast must goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. He thought they would last forever. It doesn't. And he thought that his soul, very important point, he thought his soul what his, was his body. He said, I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. The soul is not physical. It's spiritual. It's immaterial. He's talking to himself like physical things are spiritual. Oh, our culture emphasizes that so much. They think the body is the most important thing, and they think the soul is the body. And he got mixed up. He was blinded by, from reality. And so many people live that way today. Number next, he thought he had a lot of time left. He only had 18 hours left. But he said, Soul thou has much goods laid up for many years. Jesus said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. People live their lives like they have a lot of time. You don't know how much time you have left. You say, I'm going to get saved one day. I'm going to trust Christ one day when I have, when the time is right. There is no better time than right now. I'm going to start investing in future things, but right now I just got to work on the material things. You don't know how much time you have left. You could leave this world tonight. Lastly, he thought he was the most important person. He didn't even think about his family. He said, I've got all this stuff. I, 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 I. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? I just want to challenge you. The harvest is a great time of year, but there is a harvest coming in the future. There is a day in which you will be required to stand before God and give account. If you're lost, you will give account for the sins that you have committed. The Bible talks about the books being open in heaven. He will judge you out of this book right here. He will open this Bible and say, did you listen to what I gave you? And if you're not saved, don't make the mistake of thinking you have a lot of time left in life because you may not. If you're saved, the Bible says that set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Death can happen at any time. Are you prepared and have you invested in the real things that matter? God can give us grace to do that. Let me leave you with this. There was a story of a young Russian man who inherited his uh, family farm, his father's farm. And he started dreaming right away how he was going to expand that property. And one morning, a well-dressed stranger visited him and Making it, he made him an offer that was too good to be true. He said he would have free charge of all the property that he could walk in one day. The only condition was this, that he had to return to the same spot that he started, the grave of his father, 
before the sun went down. He starts at his father's grave and begins to walk. He saw those rich fields in the distance, and he took off, took off without any provisions. He didn't say goodbye to his family. He just started walking. And he figured he could cover about six square miles in a day. But after a short while, he decided he was going to go ahead and make it nine. I can go further. Then 12, then finally 15 square miles. And by noon, he makes it to the halfway point. Though hungry with his legs aching, he continues on. He was near the point of exhaustion, but the obsession to own the land drove him on. And with only a few minutes left before the sun went down, he gathered all his strength, and he stumbled across the line. The new owner of 15 square miles of land, and he collapsed on the ground and died. And that stranger smiled and said, I offered him all the land that he could cover. Now you see what that is. Six feet long by two feet wide. I thought he would like to have the land close to his father's grave rather than have it elsewhere. And having said that, that stranger, whose name is Death, vanished away and said, I kept my pledge. You know, you live your entire life for the wrong thing, and the issue is this, you can't go back. You can't restart it. If you're not saved this afternoon, I would love the chance to be able to show you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and paid for every one of your sins, and that he was buried in the grave, and three days later he rose again from the dead. Don't live your life thinking that you're investing in spiritual things, thinking that your body is your soul, that material is immaterial, that spiritual is physical, and get confused and spend all your life building up money and building up prestige and building all these things up only to find out at the end of life it was worth nothing. And Christian, we must remind ourselves to lay up treasure in heaven where rust and moth doth not corrupt for spiritual reasons and not for physical. If you would like to be saved this afternoon, we'd love to tell you how to be saved. If you'd please seek us out, look, come to me, come to Pastor Shepherd, and we'd love to show you exactly how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. Thank you. If you're visiting, thank you for being with us here this afternoon. And I am starving, and so we're going to have a word of prayer for the food, and we'll get in. Thank you for being here. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for just the great weather you've given us. Again, another harvest festival as a family together. I pray you'll bless this food of our bodies. Thank you for all the work that has gone into it. And Lord, again, I ask you, there may be someone here that just came and they're having a great time, but maybe something that was just said would convict them that this life will end one day. And if they've laid up all their efforts in this life and not thought about their soul, their spirit, where they will go, when they spend eternity out of this life. I pray that you'd speak to their heart, that they may come, ask us some questions, and want to be saved today. We pray that that would happen. Bless this food of our bodies. Give us a good evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.